All right, we'll call the meeting to order. If you please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Next, we'll have the roll call, please. Belt? Here. Warren? Excused. Carlson? Here. Decker? Excused. Hammond? Here. Hammond? Here. Heideman? Here. Toth? Here. Kittleson? Here. Matichek? Here. Riesler? Here. Sampson? Present. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweely? Uh, not here. Not here. Uh, Versi? Here. 12 present. Okay, thank you. We have a quorum. Um, next would be the approval of the minutes from the uh, uh, November 2nd uh, Committee of the Whole Meeting. So moved. Motion. Second. Second. Under discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Carries. Um, next, a public forum on agenda items. Um, what we'll do is if uh, anybody would like to be heard, three minutes, um, please raise your hand. I think we'll just... Uh, Start with Dulcie and just kind of come down the bench there. Please. Just for those, uh, microphones are live and also we're, I believe we're on TV. Hmm. So you need my name and address. Yes, address Dulcie. 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. <clears throat> yeah. um, I had sent an email to um, the members of the uh, Public Works Committee, but for those of you who aren't on that committee, I would just like to share hmm my thoughts with you. <clears throat> I don't know the status of privatizing the garbage service and adding a fee to the water bill, <clears throat> but I, I do support privatizing the service. I do not support adding a fee to the water bill. Um, I'm familiar with a community in Florida that does not provide garbage service, but they contract with private contractors, <clears throat> and the cost of those contracts become part of the budget. So those costs are part of the property bill. It's not a separate um, fee that is assessed <clears throat> to the homeowners. And um, I'm just thinking that if that's the direction you're going to go, is it, privatizing, that um, that might <clears throat> be a better option than adding a fee. And I think with all of the retirements at this time from the department, um, this would be a good time to do that because you wouldn't have to lay off people if you would do it, do it at another time. And also I understand that, there, that you need to replace the garbage trucks, so that would also alleviate the need to do that. <clears throat> I do not think government should do what the private sector can do, and so I do support privatizing the garbage pickup. Thank you. Thank you, Dulce. Um, <laughs> next. Uh, Dixusha 15 North Point Drive. Uh, this may not be the public hearing to address the 2012 budget, but the Sheboygan Taxpayer Alliance, which I am representing this evening, feels that there is still time to make major adjustments in the budget. Not to maintain last year's taxes, but to reduce the 2012 taxes below last year. We have scrutinized the 2012 budget and I have some suggestions, some questions, and some support for your efforts. Now there are 33 suggestions and questions that I will not go into tonight because of the time limit. You all have copies of that. Hopefully uh, you will be addressing that. So all of these items, if addressed, will affect the 2012 budget in a positive way. Now is the time to make some bold moves. Take the time during the Committee of the Whole to make these changes for the sake of the city taxpayer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Susha. 
Um, next. <clears throat> Maeve Quinn, that's M-A-E-V-E-Q-U-I-N-N, 310 St. Clair Avenue. Okay. Uh, thank you, Alderman and citizens, for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Um, as I already introduced myself as Maeve Quinn, I'm a city resident here. I'm also the president of the Board of Trustees of Mead Public Library. The mission of Mead Public Library is to be a community information and cultural center. And four words clearly summarize uh, the mission of our wonderful library. Inform, educate, enlighten, and inspire. I'm pleased to share with you tonight that thanks to thousands of our citizens, our library is fulfilling its mission every day. A quick review of the past year. There were 356,491 visits to Mead Public Library. There were 897,537 items checked out. And this year, there's actually been a 10% increase in citizens requiring staff interaction. And additionally, there are more than 35,000 city residents holding Mead Public Library cards. The proposed city budget requires a 4% cut to Mead Public Library, the amount of $99,435. The proposed 2012 funding is 7.8% below what the state has calculated as minimum support of the library. Over the years, we've had to reduce our expenditures on materials, and we were spending less than what is recommended for good library practices. The library employees have greatly contributed to our goal of maintaining excellent library services. Over the years, we've reduced the number of employees. Pre-1989, we had 67.5 FTEs. Our current level of FTE is 43.2. In 2011, the library employees will not receive the general salary increase of 3%. City employees of the local 1564 and Schedule A have received a 3% increase in 2011. They will also lose hours and pay due to five furloughs. This is a 1.9% salary reduction. And for many years, they were the only city employees to contribute 15% of health insurance premium. Even with these extraordinary contributions of the wonderful library employees to help maintain a good level of library services, additional cuts will result in reducing the number of employees, which will then result in reducing library hours. Mead Public Library is one of the true gems of Sheboygan and is heavily utilized by its citizens. The proposed cuts to Mead Public Library will severely jeopardize its mission to meet the needs of all citizens. It is quite evident during these challenging economic times, citizens need Mead Public Library services more than ever. I'll just conclude with four words of the Meads mission. Inform, educate, enlighten, inspire. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Quinn. Next. My name is Carol DeSalt. I live at 2736 North 30th Street. I'm here to speak against the cuts to Mead Public Library. I'm a retired teacher from the Sheboygan Public Schools, and I'm here to tell you that many of my students, most of them, use the library a lot and very effectively. Many did not have computer access in their homes and came there to do homework, read, research, and get the help from the wonderful library staff. The library became a place for them to see other adults who valued learning and sought information effectively. It was a very effective support system for these and all students. As I use the library now, I'm constantly struck by the fact that people from all walks of life and all income levels use this wonderful resource. Unemployed people came there to use the computers. Parents bring their children for books and story hours, and schools bring their students to do research that their own smaller libraries can't support. If you cut the funding for the library anymore, this vital service that we have come to use and depend upon, such as reference librarians, will be gone. In our democracy, we have to realize that our library is about education, continuing education for all, and that to continue to make cuts in this educational service is maybe a short-term fix, but it harms us in the way that it will cause cuts and lack of information in the future. Confucius had a saying that's relevant to this situation. If you plant for one year, plant rice. If you plan for 10 years, plant trees. If you plan for 100 years, educate children. Please keep this vital educational service with all the other cuts to state and local governments that we've had to make. Please don't cut the library now. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Salt. Anybody else like to? Henry Nelson, 1926 Settlement Trail. Uh, <laughs> I got a tough act to follow now. I have two uh, young ladies that did just a great job pretty much taking all my material. <laughs> but we'll, we'll go along anyway. Um, members of the Common Council, my name is Henry Nelson. I'm the uh, chairman of the Finance Committee uh, on, at Mead Public Library. Uh, my empathies. <clears throat> you have difficult decisions to make tonight or in the near future, decisions that will affect the city for years to come. Because next year's budget doesn't just affect one year, but it continues to resonate throughout the foreseeable future. It's important that these decisions aren't short-term political decisions, but long-term solutions, because they impact all the citizens. But you know that. The tax levy portion of our budget continues to be cut. Since 2008, uh, the budget has been cut over $275,000, which is approximately 10, a 10% 10 cut over that time. Uh, last year, over $159,000, or 6% of our budget uh, was cut. We absorbed that loss by elimination of general salary increases, five furlough days. Uh, on the furlough, furlough days, the uh, library is closed. And that, uh, th those closures equal about a 2% uh, cut in the wages of our uh, employees. Uh, we had retirements without replacements, which required reallocation of employees' uh, schedules and, and uh, what they do in the library. And uh, also, uh, that five furlough days, that we also did that in 2009 and 2010. And, uh, in addition to that, we've had some very difficult prioritizations. So how would we respond to additional cuts this year? Well, our options are limited. Do we do less scheduled hours each day? Do we do more for all days? In the meantime, our, services, our service needs increase. There's more demand for children's programs, and as the young lady ahead of me alluded, Education of children, I mean, how you, how you start the child off is, you know, how the child is going to grow up and finish. More demand for our teen center. You know, we have quite, if you haven't been to our library lately, we have a very exciting and viable teen center. And uh, teens that are in, at the library doing constructive things are not teens outside doing destructive things. More demand by our at-risk read unemployed citizens needing to use our technology. And not everyone has a computer at home. Uh, not everyone in these times can afford a computer and it is basically necessary for a job uh, searching. Also an additional expense we've been incurring lately is security issues. Henry, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Anybody else that uh, would like to be heard? Going once, going twice. All right, thank you very much for your input. Um, number six on the agenda is council president's comments. Fair enough, moving on. <laughs> number seven, discussion and possible action on the city of Sheboygan, Wisconsin 2012 budget. Um, I think we'll just take seven, eight, nine together. Um, council document 1547. Um, ordering the 2012 budget appropriations for the city of Sheboygan funds and 1548, ordering the 2012 budget appropriations um, and the 2012, 2011 tax levy for use during the calendar year of 2012. So um, for discussion and possible action. Where do we start? <laughs> um, I guess at this point I would entertain uh, where we want to start on this. Let's start with discussion and possible action on the, on the City of Sheboygan budget, number, 12, or number seven. Um, I guess I'll refrain from my comments for a moment and open it to the floor um, for discussion and thoughts. I'm going to screw this up at least one or two times, so forgive me. Alderman Versi. Thank you. If we could um, 
probably call up uh, Jim Modiel right away uh, because there'll be numerous questions coming towards him if we can bring him up right Fair away. Fair enough. Uh, Chief Ad Mr. Modiel. I think uh, maybe the first step would just maybe to give us a lay of the updated landscape, if you will. Sure. Where we're um, at with some of the changes that have come through. Okay. Alderman Ham, if you, if you want, you can raise my light because that's what I was getting ready to ask too. If you oh. still, I'm still flashing. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, I was just, my light was still flashing. I just wanted to uh, okay. say what <clears> you said. As I talked about uh, the other night, um, Roughly where we stand today on the 2012 budget is roughly about a $660,000 uh, shortfall. We started out with uh, a $950,000 gap. Uh, we have tentative agreements with uh, police uh, that I believe will save the city in 2012 roughly $300,000. Um, we've got uh, some cleaning services that we're looking to outsource as well as uh, not replacing um, uh, a director in public works that would save us roughly $150,000. Uh, we've got elections to deal with that I believe could be one or two, and estimates of that are between twenty dollars and $40,000, depending on if there's one or two. And we also have roughly $100,000 that we need to spend uh, probably on the dredging project uh, for the airport rehab uh, uh, between us and the county for the, uh, the waste that will come out of the, uh, the river. So that's roughly $650,000 for this year. Um, currently we have roughly 30 employees in the city that have um, handed in their retirement papers, uh, 20 of which reside in the general fund, 10 are outside the general fund. And we have uh, another 21 that have requested um, <clears throat> information on retirement and we're holding retirement meeting, not retirement meetings, but benefit meetings uh, between today and tomorrow. And I would believe that these other 20 uh, people would probably make their mind up one way or another after these meetings uh, are over with. Uh, and looking at where we are in 2011, uh, best case right now is a break-even scenario without any further retirements. Uh, we have some overspending. Um, in labor this year um, to be offset by other uh, non-labor costs that we can save between now and the end of the year. The real uh, pivotal point is, is if we have an additional 15 to 20 retirees uh, that we haven't budgeted for. Currently the 30 we, we have had this year uh, will be covered by several different areas in the budget. One is this past year we budgeted roughly 350000 uh, for retirement benefits. Uh, currently, the 30 that retired were approximately 500,000, as well as uh, the potential 20 could be upwards to another $480,000 of additional expense uh, between uh, payouts for sick leave as well as unused vacation. So I see maybe the worst case being close to $500,000 problem uh, in 2011, best case being close to neutral. Uh, but then that would come out of general fund reserves that we hadn't planned for in 2011. In looking forward to 2013, um, we have roughly a $35 million general fund budget. Um, we saw that the CPI from the state this year was 2.01%. Um, again, in difficult times, currently the state through, uh, I believe it's September, as a 3.3% CPI increase, and nationally, I believe it's 3.7%. So 2.01% is pretty low considering where the state is right now, excuse me. I believe next year, uh, with the economy uh, the way it is today, we'll probably be closer to 3%, and roughly 3% on $35 million of expenses is about a roughly another million dollars. So. <clears throat> By looking at the problem we have currently in 12 of 650, uh, not counting potentially what could happen in 11 with uh, the vast number of retirements, 
and looking forward to 13 of close to a million dollars, um, we face a million and a half to a $2 million problem between 2011 and 2013, if that answers your question. All right. Thank you, Mr. Amodio. Um, open it to the floor for questions. Um, the idea or part of this is to uh, start to build some consensus on which directions we want to go to fill this. Um, uh, in this case, this year, 650, um, but also keeping an eye towards what's going to be coming down the pipe in 2013. So um, I'll open it to the floor. Oh. I'll save you the button. Thank you. I guess we'll get right down to it. Uh, the, the garbage, um, we looked at some bids for the garbage, I'm assuming. Yes, uh, we didn't go out for formal RFP. Okay. We got uh, two informal RFPs. And that would be saving or costing us how much? Well, currently in the budget, our uh, garbage budget's $1.6 million in 2012. And uh, we have in the capital budget uh, for motor vehicle $1.6 million for new trucks for garbage and roughly $400,000 of other capital equipment in uh, motor vehicle fund. And if we uh, did privatize the garbage, would we be able to move any of that 1.6 into the general fund to help absorb some of those hits that we took, or would we leave it there? Or from from the motor vehicle fund? Yeah, I, I believe we would leave it there because uh, <clears throat> the intent of the motor vehicle fund was to charge the people that used equipment uh, not only for the cost of that equipment, but the replacement value, kind of like two plus x when you take maintenance in uh, with. The amount of usage our equipment has been getting, we've seen the allocation of costs from Motor Vehicle Fund significantly reduced. And in the past several years, they've had to actually use their fund balance to fund the operations in the Motor Vehicle Fund. Currently, we have roughly $3 million in the fund in reserves. It says if we bought trucks uh, for garbage and other trucks that we believe we need, we'd spend two of that $3 million. If we raise the allocation of cost, um, not based on usage, but just to keep the motor vehicle fund alive, 90% of the costs that get allocated from the motor vehicle fund hit the general fund, so it'd be like a double-edged sword. So I see that, you know, if we, if we do this with garbage and spend the money and we look forward to replacing vehicles um, from a fund rather than from expense, uh, specifically in police, because we've... Uh, recommended that we don't buy, buy squads this year, roughly four to five, uh, that they would have to come out of the motor vehicle fund. And if that did happen, then we'd have to probably look in the next several years of actually borrowing debt to fund vehicle purchases, whether they be for public works or for police. Okay. Um, Jim, just a clarification. The uh, estimated cost for the garbage would be 1.6 and then an additional 1.6 for equipment? Correct. Okay, so you're talking 3.2 between cost avoidance and? Yes. Cost. Okay. And then what, what would you estimate the cost to the average household um, for private garbage collection be? Well, the estimates we have right now, and again, they're not formal, but are around 9 to $10 a month. Please. And do we have a bid yet on what to privatize the garbage, what that entire dollar amount would be? Uh, from a third party charge? Yes. Again, it depends on the number of households we have. You know, just looking at the, at the water utility bills to, to residences, you know, four units and less, it's between 17000 and 17500 So it would be roughly $1.8, $1.9 million. It would be a little more expensive uh, than... The, the service we're charging, you know, the cost incurred by the city. So 1.9 to privatize, 1.6. Correct. Oh, wow. Okay, thanks. Can I ask? Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just so I can straighten this out in my mind, it's contracting out for the garbage service, and then there's a fee for that fee for that service. Correct? Are we looking at kind of? Correct. Two different things, so. No, well, what we've looked at is 
privatizing the service mm -hmm. and going to a third party. Um, the third party would charge X dollars a month to each household for the service of picking up the garbage. And the city would not be responsible for that any longer. Uh, we wouldn't have to buy the equipment and we probably, uh, at a nominal cost, could uh, at least from a startup standpoint, whoever was chosen, uh, could use our equipment until such time as they could get new vehicles to replace them. The, the struggle is then the fee that we're charging. I mean, that's the fee that we're going to be charging well, to each household. The, the, fee, the fee where the city would be neutral uh, to save the $1.6 million in expenses would be roughly between 9 and $10 a month. Per to, household? Per household. Yes. For how long? Do we know? That, I mean, uh, is that well, all to be negotiated? That's all? Well, you know, the contract we'd look at would be between three and five years. Uh, we'd like to get five to lock it in. Uh, most have proposed three. Um, but again, all I can say is that, you know, in the survey we looked at at least um, uh, from um, the Whitewater study, right. which was 2001 data, is that 71% of the state in 2001 was privatized for sanitation already, as well as recycling. Uh, we're not proposing recycling because the way we're handling this, we still would benefit from the recycling grant from the state. Um, earlier this year in the Walker Bill, that was proposed to be eliminated completely, but it's going to live for the next several years at around a $180,000 benefit to the city. Can I just continue? Please. Thank you. But then I just, I guess I, you know, you go back to this Whitewater study and, and the struggle is that, you know, citizens are not, you know, happy about paying any, you know, fees are not a in normal popular item. In normal times, if you outsource something, um, you would believe that the levy would be reduced mm -hmm. in order to support that and there would be a benefit. Um, in these times, there's not. As you know, we can't raise the levy in 2012, uh, and we've got budget constraints that say our revenue is depressed, our assessed values are down, um, our budget continues to grow only from the standpoint of 70 to 80 percent of it is people-related costs. Uh, we've done a fine job in the past three or four years of cutting non-people costs out, and we're to the point where we really can't cut much more of that out or else we won't be able to provide services because we won't have the goods or services to do that. So it says, what services do we not provide in order to meet a budget gap? And that's what we have to look at. And, 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 and my recommendation in all of this is to not to look down in 12, but to look up to 13 and look back at 11 to see what we need to do as a city so that we're in a position when we can generate some more revenue, that there's things that we can do and not limit our borrowing power. If that answers your question. Okay. Any other questions? Thanks. Yeah. I'm, I'm Good. Thank you. Um, Jim, of those 20 people in the, in the general fund that are looking to retire, how many of those come from which departments? What's the um, breakdown last time I looked, there was probably 12 to 15 from Public Works. And the rest from uh, we police had, and fire? Uh, we had one in police, several in fire. Uh, there was a couple admin. Um, with some of the changes due to the, to, due to the Walker Bill, um, with DPW, is there any opportunity for, and maybe this is a Dave Beebel question, is he here? Mm -hmm. oh. um, you know, is there any opportunity for, you know, with, for cost savings that then changes, whether it's contracting or, um, you know, not rehiring some of those positions? Uh, I know we don't know for sure how many people are actually going to retire until, was it December 7th when they actually have to finally make that decision? Um, but. Is there any potential there? If you maybe come up, please. We can share this. We can share the podium. There's enough room back there. <coughs> uh, definitely. Um, Jim and I were talking about that today. It's like a moving target right now. People are 
submitting the resignations. We're looking at our TO, how we do business, with the impact of the Walker Bill and the state budget moving forward. It gives us, I guess, a new way of operating business from a public works standpoint in the city. So I, I can't quantify that, but I, but I do think there'll be some significant savings within um, the public works organization as we move forward. Um, you know, as a legislation body here, I, I don't see that if 20 people retire in public works, then I'm gonna get approval to hire all 20 of those positions back. So I'm sure through attrition and reallocating our budget through throughout uh, 2012, we're gonna realize the savings in the department. Great. Alderman Versi. If I can, right, right to you, Dave. With all the retirements and potentially more retirements coming up, from a strategic standpoint, how many do you need to hire back that you see right now? We have about five, five managers in our department leaving. At this point, I'm looking potentially to combine some of those management positions and maybe only needing to hire two out of the five. Um, but that's still a work in progress and trying to shuffle some of those responsibilities and allocate those workloads between those managers. Uh, you know, the garbage collection is still an issue. Um, we need to look at that down the road if it does get contracted. Um, you know, shifting that personnel into other areas will affect how we reallocate some of that labor as well in the department. It, the, Please. the reason why I ask is because I'm, I personally am kind of done with the DPW being the whipping boy of everything that we come up with for slashing our budgets. That's why I ask, how many do we need to keep our services? Well, what people are expecting to be done with 20, possibly 30 potential retirees, honestly, how many we need to keep going the way we are? Well, the budget that we submitted for this year is pretty much the exact same in ter terms of personnel. So the amount of personnel that we have currently in 2011 is what we budgeted for 2012. Um, however, being that we have some opportunities now with the addition of added hours for temporary and summer seasonal employees, the ability to do contractual work within the community, um, I think we'll be able to maximize that as well. But we, we will need a core solid group of full-time employees to answer those day-to-day -day needs and that's what we're, we're really trying to establish right now. Um, we're gonna have a tremendous uh, drain on our knowledge base within the department. And fortunately, we do still have some long-term employees that are gonna st stay through this. And we're gonna maximize that, that talent and reallocate them in, in the proper areas. Thank you. I think one of the things that uh we have as a, I don't want to say a luxury, that's a bad way of putting it, but is the ability to contract various different services and the expansion of the Schedule X um, to 1,200 hours. So it sounds like you're going to try to take full advantage of, of that. Um, any idea when you think you might have a cost estimate of, of that? I know it's putting you on the spot, Dave. I apologize, but obviously. Monday? Uh, I might answer that. Yeah. For oh, yeah, okay. we're, 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 the, the, like I said, it's it's kind of a, a moving target. Um, we have an idea of I, I do have some resignations already in hand, and I can actually start the process of planning accordingly. Uh, others are are unknown. Yeah, there's talk. They've checked some numbers, but until we actually get a formal letter that this is the date they're leaving. Uh, it's, it's a little hard to anticipate, but I've thrown some, some numbers out there and looking. It, it, they're, 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 if just, just for instance, if we um, consolidate those two management positions, that's two higher level positions, you know, that's over $100,000 savings in that area right there that we could potentially realize right away. Okay. Please. Thank you. Uh, Dave, real quick, I, I don't want to sound argumentative or anything like that. Well, kind of, I do. Um, Can you move your microphone up, <laughs> yeah. please? Um, Zip up your zipper. <laughs> They'll bring your microphone that, up, too. There you go. Thank you. We have a matter of, I don't know, two and a half, three weeks before we have to finalize our budget as a council. We have no real numbers as far from, from, from your perspective 
of what that core number of people that you need to work, how are we supposed to then make decisions if we don't know what we're making decisions on? If, if, you, have, if you could give us a little bit, I mean, dollar-wise, maybe it's a little trickier, but people-wise, you, you've been around DPW for a number of years, uh, so you have an idea of what's working, what you need, what's gonna be more effective for you on a, on a staff perspective. Uh, so how are we supposed to be able to give any guidance if, if you don't have an idea of how many people that core th that you need? You know, if we say, well, we're gonna, we're gonna allocate X number of dollars to your department, and you say, well, that may or may not work, we have two or three weeks to make some heavy decisions here, and we don't know what we're making decisions on if, if, if you can't provide it, it. It's dependent upon where those employees are located. For instance, if they're at the wastewater treatment plant, I need those people. That's a technical operation. We're going to fill those positions. If it's, uh, for instance, in the labor pool or in the parks, maybe we could do without those positions and maybe you utilize some temporary contractual work. So um, it's a little dependent upon the position and the person and where they're located. And that's, that's the difficulty that I'm struggling with. The, the budget that we submitted is the budget that I feel strongly about keeping everybody that we have currently and getting them filled. Um, given the budget situation where we're at, that we have a shortfall, that's probably not going to be a reality. So um, I'm going to try to get as many employees to get the work done. We have more demand in terms of work in this city than we have employees or budget. So then it becomes a prioritization exercise. And that's what we're doing right now. I, I think there'll be at the end of this, and I'm hoping we, we've had some benefit meetings today. We're going to have some tomorrow. We'll get some answers from employees fairly soon. Uh, and that's, that's why we're trying to give you an update. And it's, it's, it's difficult, I understand. But where we're at, I, I do anticipate, as I mentioned, at least some savings within the reorganization, some of those management positions maybe being consolidated, as well as if I get some of the, the others in the labor pool that actually give me some official notice, we'll maybe be able to take those funds and, and use it in a summer seasonal or contractual type of work. Dave, in your defense, you can't tell us what you need until we tell you if we're having garbage or not, correct? That, that's a big variable right there. Oh, that's a piece of it. That's, that's eight people's work. Uh, I, I think, you know, part of the other issue is of the uh, 22 people we have that potentially could leave, 15 are in public works uh, in the general fund. So it says until we know if those people are really going to leave or not, we're not, we're not sure what skill set, number one, is left. Uh, it might be easy -er to determine what we think we need in the skill set. But again, what we haven't explored in this opportunity is maybe that outsourcing a skill set rather than hiring people in the long run might be more cost effective. And that's something that we, we, you know, we just need time to explore. For sure, there'll be a little consolidation in the management ranks, I believe. Dave talked about one or two people. I also believe there'll be a timing effect on if we had to hire 20 or 30 people to bring them in. Uh, so you'd see some benefit from that, again, depending on the skill set that we were after. So I believe there will be some savings there. Very difficult for me to put a number on. I'm certainly not as close to it as Dave is. <clears throat> and Dave is a little apprehensive because he's not sure really he's, what he's going to be left with at the end of December and people. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in the past, we've looked at privatizing garbage. And uh, uh, I sit on the, the commi DPW committee. and. Uh, it's my impression that the city does a very good job of collecting garbage. And with the relaxed rules that we're going to have to be able to, to utilize more people down in public works, we probably would be able to do, would you say, garbage in the future for less than we're paying for now? Well, yes, there's that potential. Okay. Okay. But no, instead, to plug a hole, we would decide to charge our citizens more by privatizing it just to plug a hole and they don't see any savings by not by losing uh, the garbage pickup. Because if we outsource this and we have to pay 1.3 million and we could have actually got the job done for maybe a million, wouldn't we be better off saving the taxpayer uh, some money by keeping it in-house? Especially being able to experience in the upcoming years because we've got the relaxed rules and be able to, uh, he'd be able to manage this department a little bit better? 
Are you asking me? No, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> You're looking at me. Yes, he is. <laughs> I'm just directing my comments towards you. But Thank you. I appreciate I, that. I mentioned it to Dave because, yeah. like I said, that's the, that's the thought that I get from being on that committee. Uh, and I think that's that's important for our committee members to be able to say, you know what, that's our department. Again, as uh, Alderman Versa said, the DPW has taken a lot of hits, and we really haven't seen the true results that we could get from from uh, the, the change in the labor law, uh, the bargaining uh, stuff that came out through the Walker bill, and I'd like to be able to see that before we go and privatize something to actually charge our citizens more money to have a job done that we can do better ourselves. Anything on that? Okay. Alderman Versi. Thank you. It's two things. The first thing is going staying with the garbage. If just theoretically say we stay in the business, and what we're, we're uh, Alderman Heidemann was going was we stay in the business, is there a year attached to that on when we could potentially see, because you're going down to different trucks to putting one guys on, potentially going from eight to four man crew. I mean, the savings in the garbage alone, that's where he was going. I mean, where, when would you see it? And if it wasn't there, how many years would we, we still be in the business? Well, we've been in the garbage business forever. Um, that's one of our core functions of the department. We're, it's one of the areas that I have to say that we, we maximize the efficiency out of that operation. It's one of the things that we have to do every day. We know that we have to pick it up. We know those routes. We've streamlined that operation. The, 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 the struggle here is that we, we are gonna need equipment. So we are looking at new equipment. Yes, there'll be one, one person trucks. It might be a combination of still, some two man crews yet for some of our interior areas through the alley pickup in some of the inner city where it's tight for maneuverability. But nevertheless, I mean, there, there is potential. Um, we, we may have the opportunity to use summer seasonal now on garbage where in the past we weren't. Years ago, we did. Um, back in the early 80s and late 80s, we had summer seasonal at a much lower rate and they just stayed on the back of the truck and that's all they did is is, is throw the garbage all day. So I mean, th there are these opportunities. It's just, it's, it's, it's difficult to hit that right now. We, as I mentioned, we did put in the budget to purchase new equipment. There's a long lead time. It's not gonna be if we get this budget approved, we're gonna have this. this. This is custom equipment. It's not sitting on a lot somewhere where you can just drive up and say, that's the one I want. So it's probably about six to nine month lead time and it's expensive. The second, the second part outside of garbage is with the people you know that are retiring now, 100% for sure, super conservatively speaking, you could already be saving $100,000. Yes. That's being, with the, that's what you're doing right yep. now, that's $100,000 $100, savings from your budget right now. That's, yeah, that would be a conservative estimate, yes. Okay. Alderman Kittleson. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. And, and Dave, then can, can I just ask how then how long would we have that equipment? You're saying there's a lead time to get that equipment built. How long would we have that garbage equipment? We, we, we typically have a life cycle of about eight years on our garbage okay. equipment. The current trucks we have are six, mm -hmm. six years. Mm -hmm. the, the issue isn't the actual truck itself, it's the packer unit. That takes the biggest uh, wear and tear okay. and unfortunately, the issue that we have with this, the current Packer equipment is the company is no longer in business. Okay. Um, I think for obvious reasons, we're having difficulty with it. So you said eight years. Eight years, is our, eight years is our typical life cycle for that type of equipment. And they're in the budget, you have them in the budget. Correct. Alderman Carlson. Thank you. So we're talking potential savings here over the next year or two or what have you based on just maybe a little bit more efficiency cuts, but our, sorry, I should have thought about this a little bit more, but um, as over the next two years, we're looking at one and a half to $2 million, correct? That's what we need to look forward. I, obviously we can just try to plug a hole for 2000. Uh, 12, Correct. but that's that's not the best way to do this. So if we're talking just uh, low six-figure savings, that's not going to help us get to 1.5, $2 million. 
So, I mean, you don't even, do you have, I mean, he says $100,000 just through um, attrition, but um, Joe Heidemann was talking about just savings through the garbage service. Could you, could you put a number behind that? Well, our, our current budget is right around 1.6 million to do the complete garbage for the city of Sheboygan. Of that, labor, labor, um, just one second, please. Our full-time labor for garbage collection for 2012 is budgeted at 419,000. So of that, I would say, potentially you could maybe save anywhere from 15 to 20 percent with adding temporary or summer seasonal to help offset some of the full-time labor on that collection. Then I, I guess I, I'm just going to throw this out there just because I, I have to. Are we willing to bet that these, uh, these relaxed labor laws are going to still be in place in a year or two? Obviously, we have a round of recalls coming through. Who knows what can happen, so do we really want to take that chance and just make assumptions now that may not be there anymore? <coughs> just throwing that out there. Um, Alderman Riesler, did you have a question? I, I, I just a clarification. When you say it's 1.6 and then we have the 1.6 for the trucks, if you divide that over eight years, are, is that already included in there, like the extra 200000 a year, or are we kind of actually going to be cost neutral once we look at taking that money for the trucks? There is built into that 1.6. Would so be the money to pay back the right. Okay. It may have to be adjusted depending on the cost on those trucks and the eight-year life cycle. But that 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 figure is within that fund. Alderman Sampson. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll stick on garbage right now. So far, from what I'm understanding here tonight, there's really no. Savings. If, if you're going to, if to the taxpayer right now for removing garbage as a business for the city and, and privatizing it, so to speak, if, if you're going to, if you're looking at two potential proposals at nine to ten dollars a month to the taxpayer, we're not decreasing taxes in any stretch by privatizing garbage. So you're just actually increasing the, 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 a bill. You're sending a bill to every household uh, for a service that we're already getting, in addition to what we're already paying in taxes. So we're not we're not saving anything. Because from what I see, that's one what 1.9 million if we privatize roughly, mm -hmm. and we're dump, putting out 1.6. Mm -hmm. We're saving money already if if we just stayed in the model that we're in, compared to privatizing. If we're if we're going 1.6 is next year's budget without anybody retiring, without anybody. But if you've budgeted 1.6, and if we privatize, we're at 1.8, 1.9, with no decrease in taxes whatsoever. So you're not saving money anywhere for anybody. We're just shifting who's doing the garbage pickup from the city to some other company. But We're paying more. But the general fund saves the 1.6 million because the 1.9 million would be paid directly by the citizens. We wouldn't be in the garbage business and there wouldn't be 1.6 million of cost in the general fund. So our general fund would be reduced. We just be passing the cost on to the citizens of Sheboygan. Instead of taxing them for $120, a higher tax. Oh, I'm sorry. Instead of taxing them $120, we're basically ending at $120 on the water bill throughout the whole year. Correct. Okay. Oh. Good. Lemon Van Akron. Thank you. Um, again, just to, to kind of go off of some of that, as he said, Currently, garbage costs us $1.6 million. That would be the, the savings that the city would see. However, by privatizing that, that cost of garbage collection would actually go up to one9 and, and it's proposed that we would just pass that along to a per-household fee at approximately 9 to $10 a month or 110 to $120 a year. Is that Correct. a fair a statement on it? Um, I guess I have a lot of concerns about privatizing garbage, one of it being the cost. We're actually doing it more cost effective currently than we would be by privatizing it. Um, my other concerns is at the end of that three to five year contract, um, who's to say where that cost goes? And now we no longer have trucks, we no longer have guys. We really have no longer the ability to get back into uh, uh, you know, picking up garbage at that time because I don't foresee 
um, the city looking at the huge startup cost to get back into that. So I have some concerns at the end of that contract with the limited amount of providers, we could really see a huge increase to the per household fee for garbage collection that we do at a very cost effective rate now. Um, so I'm, I'm very concerned about privatizing garbage for those factors. Again, we're actually doing it cheaper than what the private industry is talking about providing. Um, but I do understand the, the fiscal reality of all of this. We are $600,000 short. We're talking about being $1.5 to $2 million short next year. So there certainly is some changes that we all need to decide. I mean, we, we either need to make some cuts to services or we need to increase some fees or we need to generate revenue. I mean, it really comes down to that. I, I understand, I don't think anyone likes the situation we're in, but something needs to happen and, and things need to change over the next few years or, or we're really gonna be in some, some hard places and not able to provide many services to our citizens any longer. Alderman Matichek. Um Just had a question about the, the recycling. That's still gonna remain in-house pretty much. And right now, do they share any resources, the recycling and the, uh, the trash removal? Can you use the microphone? <laughs> I was just talking. The garbage and the recyclables and garbage are picked up at the same time. They, they would be contracted with garbage. However, where the city is considered the responsible unit for recycling, that's why under the con a contract, we would still be in, ch in, in control of that. We would get the revenue from the state. We would still have to manage to make sure that we're meeting our recycling guidelines, but it would still be picked up under a contract if we went to a contract. Okay. Good. Alderman Riesler. I guess I'll go back to the, the, the Whitewater study with the 2001 and 71% or 71% of municipalities have privatized garbage. Roughly in the state of Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin. I, I think that of those 71% under the budget constraints we're at, they'd be happy right now to be able to um, to go to a privatized garbage and save some money because we're I think we're fortunate to have that ability to do it um, as opposed to looking at this as something that's that's terrible where we don't have the ability to raise any tax for anything to save any services that, that we feel are important. This is one of the ways that we can fill the gap to uh, to save that. Editorial. Oh. Alderman Versi. Thank you. Going into the full budget, um, just general questions for you, Jim. Um, workers' comp, were we super underfunded the last couple of years on workers' comp? Is that why it, it all more than tripled in most of the areas? Yes. Okay. Next one is? Well, let, let me, if you want the short story. Sure. All we did was charge out premiums to departments in the general fund. We had a workers' comp fund where we had a funding balance that we paid the claims out of. In 2008 and 9, we had severe years in workers' comp claims. The fund in 2010 ended up going negative by $200,000. So we made a conscious decision this year to not charge the $80,000 in premium only to departments but to charge the actual claim costs for the prior years to the departments that created the cost. So that's why you see that. And the intent is to bring that fund neutral over the next two years. Okay. And then the second part, well, it's over and over in a lot of departments, contractual services. Um, one right off the bat, $100,000 in the mayor's office for contracted services. <coughs> what are these contracts? That's SCEDC contribution. Okay, and these other departments, hold on, let me find them. Let's see, HR department, $38,000 in contracted services. I know Chad was- We Chad consolidated was. there all of the advertising for open positions. Okay. What's this? Purchasing. Contracted services. I mean, is that's, a lot of these that's, fifty, that's 50% of Bernie or Ramier. We share, share Bernie with, with the, the county. county. Okay. Here's a computer maintenance. Um, this one's in the PD. 
going to 112,000 for computer maintenance. I thought, is that part of the CAD RMS system? Yeah. The reason that, why it went up? That's correct. Okay. Um, here, mobile telephones. There's a severe increase in all departments with mobile telephones. What, which departments? Almost all of them. Well, they're not in all of them. We've had a, an increase in mobile phones, again, for the PD. Yep. That uh, in support of that. Just here. Right. Okay. Fire department, same, same reason? Correct. Mm -hmm. Not the big ones. While well, you're looking that up, Alderman Versi. Go ahead. Alderman Van Akron. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Jim, can you go over in your executive budget submission that was submitted? There were some, I don't know if you want to call them recommendations, proposals, ideas that were listed as to how we could bridge some of the gap that was there. Now, obviously, some of that has come down. Can you go over those again and just discuss what um, potential opportunities or um, you know, revenues could be increased or, or, or I guess just go over some of those options that were submitted with your summary. Yeah, I mean, from a, from a revenue generation standpoint, um, if you look at in the past, uh, the city uh, charged the wheel tax uh, to its citizens of, I think it was $2 to $2.50 a wheel. So it would be 8 to $10 a vehicle when you registered your plates. Um, the intent of that was to repair roads. Uh, I think that generated roughly $250,000 a year. Uh, that goes a long way to filling potholes. That could be offset in the general fund currently, but it couldn't pave streets. Sure. Um, we had a stormwater fee um, that was done away with probably um, three years ago plus. Um, it used to generate roughly $1.5 million in revenue. Uh, probably had about six or seven hundred thousand dollars of expenses, uh, and the balance of that was set aside to do needed infrastructure repair for stormwater drains. Um, again, the upside was with an aging infrastructure, it helped defray the cost rather than borrowing money. The downside was is that 80 percent of that revenue was generated from commercial slash manufacturing. And I think that might be the last thing we'd like to, to do in this state of the economy is to go back and now impose a large tax on the manufacturing sector in our city uh, to potentially lose some jobs. Um, the other thing we looked at was um, reducing a fire station. Uh, potentially, uh, we have some retirements that we could do that, albeit the benefit wouldn't be as significant as we thought because um, what Chief Herman did to save some money was to delay hiring of a replacing of those people. So that could, be, that could be worth several hundred thousand dollars if we chose to do that. But that would be closing one of the five stations next year. And we also looked at, uh, you know, if Mead Library would contribute anymore. Uh, we, we did get contributions from transit. Uh, it was over and above uh, the benefit they received from uh, WRS and uh, the medical plan. Uh, what we received uh, to keep budget neutral, the library was $100,000 roughly that they received as contributions or credit to costs for WRS contributions. Okay. 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 Alderman Kittleson. Thank you. Can, I'm looking at these recommendations, Jim, and the first one was um, reduction of employees needed to close the gap. Right. You said average salary with benefits, $70,000 plus unemployment compensation. That would take 21 employees. Right. Is, now is now the, we're probably at, um, what are, do the simple math. About 10. We're at how much? Yep. 10, yeah, 10, 10 to house. 11. Okay. Thanks. Ready now, Alderman Versi? For another one, sure. Um, building exterior maintenance. Every year, I went back actually a couple, couple years to 09. Every year was almost the same dollar amount, give or take a couple thousand dollars. But every building, I mean, anywhere between 19,000, 18,000, I mean, 20,000. Every year, these buildings are having that kind of maintenance done. They're pretty old buildings. 
Would you like to go through the bills and see what they're for? I'd be happy to do that. I don't have a clue. I can't sit up and tell you why. Well, I mean, just some of them from last year went from 9000 to 19000 I mean, I guess. And again, that's It's nitpicking, but I, I guess. It nitpicking. is, but that's based on estimates that we got from Public Works to maintain the, okay. the current buildings we have. Alderman Carlson. Thank you. Could you also go over the importance of um, looking out a couple years and building back up our reserve fund when it comes to um, bonding? Sure. Um, currently, uh, we have $5.6 million in general fund undesignated reserves. Um, and that's up from about um, $3.8 million um, in 2009. One of the things that uh, the city gets looked at from um, third parties, such as Moody's um, or Standard & Poor's, is they set the bond rating for the city. And that gives us the ability, based on that rating, to go out in the open market and raise debt uh, to support funds that we need in the city, whether it's for capital improvement programs, road programs, or whatever. Naturally, the higher the rating, the lower the cost of borrowing money for the city is. <clears throat> the city has an ordinance in place that says currently that 18% of next year's budget should be set aside for general fund reserves. And probably going back over the last five or six years, we've never met that number. <clears throat> and most years it's been probably under 13%. In 2010, when we ended up with $5.6 million, we were at 16.3%, closest we've come in a long time. The objective there is to at least main 18. When rating agencies look at the city, uh, or any city for that matter, across the United States, they like to see roughly a 20% spread in general fund reserves to next year's budget. So the example would be, next year if our budget's $35 million, they'd like to see a general fund reserve balance of roughly $7 million. Our, our ordinance says it should be about 6.6 .6 based on 18%. So we should strive to do that in order to keep our bond rating so that the city can go out and borrow money as cheaply as it can. Right now we have a double A rating by one and a double A two rating uh, by um, the other, Standard and & Poor's and Moody's. In, in both of their standards, those ratings are relatively the same which says the city's stable. The fortunate part about the city debt is the majority of it is in TIF districts. And they look at TIF districts, they being the rating agencies, as self-generating revenue to pay down debt. So they really don't hold that against a municipality. Actually, the more debt you have in TIF and the less you have in general obligation debt, the better off you are currently the way they look at it. So even though we haven't met the 20% standard, the majority of our debt, roughly 60% of our debt, is in TIF debt, so they kind of offset each other. So we've been able, even through these hard times, to maintain that AA rating for the city. If, in fact, we drop down below that, and let's say we take the, the 5.6 million, and we need a million and a half to two million, and it goes down to uh, three and a half to four million, that would have an adverse effect on the cost of us borrowing money going forward. And it's very difficult, uh, especially with the economic environment, uh, where, you know, our population is down slightly. Uh, we're basically a resort area, um, and the, the average income is less than a lot of places that they benchmark in the state. It would take a long time for us to get that rating back up, my personal opinion. You good, yes. Alderman Carlson? Yes, thank you. Okay. I just wanted everyone to hear that if they haven't heard it already, just because I, we can sit here and nitpick all we want, but I, I think we need to go for the um, biggest pieces of the pie here so we can actually start um, putting some money back into that fund so we're not in trouble a year or two from now. Alderman Versi. On that note, bring, <laughs> bringing back up the fire department. Um, Talking about big pieces, I mean, to me, everything, money is money everywhere we can save it, and we went through this in strategic. Um, the station idea, it's been thrown around by s several people where to move them, and the cost savings there is still a pretty large cost savings. Um, 
why we're deciding to stay where it is is beyond me, but um, four stations or three stations with even, not even going down to some of the scenarios that the chief had on here, but even going down to the 72 firefighters with three fire stations. And we already have some of the areas looked at that are already owned by city. Um, so it's not two and a half million dollars to build a new station. Why isn't this something that we need to look at to add some of these cost savings of a half a million dollars right there and keeping our firefighters where they are without replacing all of the retirements, keeping the 72 and a half full timers. I mean, that's, that's a $500,000 savings that could be added to on top of garbage and everything else. We have to do more than one thing to patch a hole, and this is something that needs to be talked about. What, what, what's the 500000 Well, if you went down to three stations, I'm going by his numbers on here, his four stations and 72 firefighters, that's 340000 You dump another station without replacing the six retirees, you're down to 71. So um, his three stations, but that's 55 firefighters, that's $1.8 million. I don't want to go down that far, but a three, a, the third station, which is either a DPW, which he has written down on here, we have a current south side station and a current north side station, so we don't need to rebuild. Um, the, the savings with there is something that we should not keep passing down the road. I think we have to make, or the council has to make a conscious decision to say where they'd like to see the fire department go. I think on a three station scenario, we've got to build another one and we've got to look at options there. Um, next year, we have four to five people leaving potentially. Uh, it says that if we chose to, we could pick a station to close. I think the savings next year would be less only because of the way we budgeted the replacements, but we could save $200,000 by doing that next year. If we're going to go any further than that or deeper than that, then we've got to look at, you know, how we want to restructure the whole fire department. And again, <clears throat> I think the chief is willing to do it. We're all willing to look at it, but we need clearer direction on that from the council. I mean, that's just like from a citizen standpoint, uh, my personal opinion again, whether you privatize garbage or you take two fire stations out. You know, as long as the fire stations aren't in my neighborhood, that's a good thing. Uh, but if they are, I got an issue. We've gone through that uh, in 2010, as I recall, or 11. So well, and it's and easy to say, but it's very difficult. Well, in our strategic meeting, the chief even said response times, even if we closed the downtown station and if we moved something down and had the adequate number of firefighters per station, which we don't have right now, it's doing two things. You're not really doing a service to the citizens. You're endangering the firefighters because only two guys are on Way South Side Station and three guys are downtown. So you're not doing a service because they have to wait around. They get to the call, they wait for the next guys to show up so they can do something. So you have the adequate number of firefighters per station. They can do more, faster, and it's better for the guys and it's better for the citizens. Even if you're increasing 54 seconds to your response times that we talked about in strategic fiscal planning. I'm going to bring Chief Herman up um, the to ask Jim, uh, <laughs> Mr. Amodio, Jim, to be an expert on the fire department. Um, please, if you would. Um, first of all, the, the three station scenario that was in the, the long range plan was the one that was requested by, by you, I think, was one of the scenarios um, that you wanted to see. Um, and this was talked about in strategic fiscal planning. If we would go down to a four station model with the 72 firefighters, um, we're really only adding one firefighter to one of those four stations because there's only two at, the, at one of them right now. So we're, really, we're adequately, adequately staffed in the stations. Um, what you're gonna see, if you go to a four station model, and this is, um, I hate to say we're rushing this decision, but it needs to be made at some time. Um, for instance, that Station 5, that land was purchased 27 years before that station was built. So when you're planning fire stations, you need to be looking out 20 years. It's kind of hard to uh, look ahead a year and try to fix this problem. But in the four station model, um, if we were to close the downtown station and the 25th Street station and, and build a new one somewhere in the middle, let's um, say the DPW, what you're going to see, the, result, the end result of that will be, um, in the simplest of terms, the difference in response time is going to be the amount of time that that station takes to get to where station one is, which is 
probably going to be roughly two minutes. So you'll see an increase in response times about two minutes to the east side of, from here east, and you'll see about a two to three minute increase in response times to the far west side. So that's really going to be the ramifications of going to a four station model with that station central. That and the cost to build that station. Please. I guess, you know, if you talk about the DPW station, to re revamp that isn't going to be a two and a half million dollar project and the building's already there. And increased response times, we talked about that in strategic. If you actually have the proper number of firefighters, you're actually doing a better service. Even if you increased it by a minute, your response time, having the adequate number of firefighters on the scene in that response time is actually better than a two minute response time with two guys. But that, that is not going to change at all. That, how many people arrive on scene in that amount of time is that's probably going to be worse in a four station model than a five because, um, because of the four stations that are going to be waiting longer for that second truck to come. And it's not like those firefighters are standing there doing nothing waiting for that second fire truck. They're laying hose lines out, they're walking the perimeter of what it, the structure that's on fire, they're, they're planning on what the plan of attack is, and they do have the ability to make that conscious decision to go in if they want to. NFPA standards say that's, that's in their realm of responsibility to decide if they go in safely. But what it does say that they should wait for five people to be on scene before they actually do that. Um, the scenario that we talked about at uh, strategic fiscal planning was not occupying a part of um, Department of Public Works. I have not had that discussion with, with Mr. Beeble. That was constructing a new station on that site. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, sir. Um, just to touch on some of that and to get some clarification, I think it's misleading to say that it, it would serve us better to go down to um, fewer stations. Would it cost less? Yes. As far as a service, would it be better to the citizens? I, I don't believe so. Because as you said, those, those firefighters get there and they're starting the base work of what they need to do. And that needs to be done whether it's four guys arriving on a truck or two guys arriving on a truck. That work still needs to be done. Holes need to be laid out. A plan needs to be laid out. The assessment needs to be made at ha as to how you're going to attack um, what you're going to, correct? I mean, all of that still needs to be done whether it takes two minutes longer and you've got four guys or two minutes less and now you're, you're, you, your first two guys are there and you're waiting for other people to get there. Is that correct? As a whole, if we go down to the four station model, 72 firefighters, we're actually reducing from the number 16 that we normally have on a scene when we call everybody there down to 15. So it, it's less people there taking just a little bit longer time to actually get there. And I think the other impact that needs to be understood when you go down to four stations is, um, and using 2010 numbers, there were about 26 times when we had all our resources out. And then we, if another call came in, we either scrambled the free upper rig to send it, um, we call, we're in the process of calling people in to man another rig, or we used mutual aid um, a handful of times. If we go down to the four station model, that's gonna happen probably 80 times or so based on 2010 numbers. And there'll probably be that 25 times that we're scrambling, those are gonna be delayed responses. Uh, and that's a decision that the council needs to make um, on, uh, and as a fire department, what do we do in those 25 instances? Do we start calling people back? Do we change to a partial paid on call system? Or do we contract services with our, our surrounding communities? But every one of those scenarios, you're looking at about a 15 minute response to that call. Please follow And to, con to continue on with that, <clears throat> under the four station model that's, that's been uh, suggested and considered, I mean, we're doing that specifically for cost saving measures. And you had stated that you'd see a three, two to three minute increase in response times to the downtown area and east. Um, Again, on average, the average call, if I believe was correct in strategic, was about 50 seconds increase on average. Well, a lot of the city is going to get the same response time that they had been getting. But the downtown area, you're going to see a two to three minute response time. And, and if I'm quoting you correctly from strategic fiscal planning, um, fires double in size every minute. So you're talking about fighting fires that are 
that are well progressed as to what used to have been the case if you would close the downtown station. And, and, and again, just to clarify, I believe the downtown station has the most calls and is often the first one on scene to the, the majority of the calls that the fire department gets. Is, am I correct? The majority of our calls are in this area. I think it's, um, I don't know, roughly 37%. 30, mid 30% 30 of our calls are in this area. So, so the large majority, 37% of your calls, will see an increase in response times and we'd be doing that specifically to solve our budget hole for this year. And I don't even think the cost savings in that would, would solve that problem. That, yeah, I can't tell you that we're going to provide a better service from four stations because we won't. Alderman Carlson, did you have something? Yes, thank you. Uh, based on the level of service we have right now in the city, what do we spend per capita for fire service compared to other uh, cities of similar size? Um, I can't give you the exact number, but uh, according to a number of studies, <coughs> we're in the bottom 25% in the state and we're below the normal charge. So I think we're, we really have the best of both worlds. We have one more station than what would be considered normal for a city our size yet we're doing it for cheaper than what other cities are doing it for. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Feel free to sit down here. <laughs> All right. Other discussion? You know, again, I, oh, sorry, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in reference to having that, um, when you privatize garbage, putting it on the water bill, why can, can't that be on the tax bill? It could be. We just, oh. first tax bill's going out uh, in four weeks. So if we could have a decision by then, we could certainly get it on there. Okay, and that wheel tax and that other it wouldn't, tax? The, it wouldn't be a, a deduction they could take for taxes, but we could get it as a special assessment on the tax bill. Okay, and the wheel tax or the stormwater fee, could that go on the tax bill also? The wheel tax would have to be set up through the state, through motor vehicle. And stormwater we would have to do, but that would actually go on the water bill as it had in the past. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, sir. I guess I'm, I'm going to throw out some ideas and I'd like some feedback from the group and, and try to see where we want to get here. Um, we're, we're approximately 600 and $60,000 short, approximately? Okay. Um, I guess I, I'd like your opinion on if we would keep the garbage service with the city and start a small fee um, rather than 9 to $10 a month and lose complete control of the service and lose the ability to control the cost of the service after that contract, um, as well as seeing an increase from 1.6 million in operating costs going to 1.9 million in operating costs. If we kept the garbage service with the city the way it's operating at 1.6 million and we established, say, a $3 a month fee um, based on the, the public works estimate that I had given or had been given of 17,500 households at $3 a month. Um, you would see a revenue of approximately $648,000, correct? Yeah, offset by about $40,000 for billing that we would do through the water utility. Okay, would, and, and if we had the ability to do that on the tax fee, you would not have that? Correct. $40,000? Correct. So depending on the billing, you could see a, a fluctuation of approximately $40,000. Correct. So we, we could see an increase of, of revenue from anywhere from $600,000 to $648,000, somewhere in that range. Sure. Um, also, on one of your suggestions were um, the, the, the wheel tax um, for road repair. Um, that too would bring in approximately another $250,000, so you, now we're talking somewhere in the range of $900,000, correct? Mm -hmm. I, I understand that that certainly doesn't get us through the problem of 2013, but it, but it certainly solves our issue currently. And, and again, my issue with privatizing garbage is you lose complete control of where that cost goes in the future. And I have real concerns about that being the limited number of providers, as well as the fact is that 
the way we are operating now is cheaper than what private industry is quoting us or, or would be able to offer it. And, and it's not as if it is getting any cheaper for the person who's paying that bill. It's just the city's not paying that bill. We're passing that along as a user fee to the citizens of our city. The, the, their service is possibly, you know, they don't know what they'll be getting. They know what they get from us. They, it, they're going to be charged more. They're, rather than 1.6, it's going to go to 1.9. It's just that the city no longer is going to pay for it. We're just going to pass that along to them. I guess I would rather see us, rather than pass along a fee of a higher cost to our citizens, I'd rather see us you know, establish a small fee due to our fiscal situation and keep the service ourselves. At least they know what they're getting. They can count on the dependable service that we are getting, and we provide it for less, and we control where that cost goes. In three years, we don't have to be worried about the fact that this could cost 2.5 million or $3 million or double or triple. Um, I guess I, I want to pose some of these ideas and see what your thoughts are because do I like the idea of charging $3 a month for a garbage pickup? Absolutely not. And, and if in the future our, our economic situation changes, can we pull that fee off? Absolutely. Three years from now, we can't, I, I don't see it to be feasible to get back into the garbage business three years from now if the private contractors say, well, you know, costs have gone up, you no longer have trucks, you no longer have guys, so we're going to charge double. I don't think we, we have the ability to do that. Um, I, I guess, I, do, do I like the scenario? No, but I'd certainly like it better than passing along a, ten, a $10 a month fee to per household and losing all control of where this service goes and the quality of service people are getting. Um, so I guess I pose some of these questions to you. It, it would raise about $900,000 and it would do things that, one of it being the re road repair side of it, citizens have, have said in this survey that's one of the things that they want to see done. You know, at the same time we have to realize the financial situation we're in, we have to find a way to either raise some fees and raise some revenue or cut back in areas and services that we provide. You know, we, we've gone over and over different services that all of us, you know, feel strongly about. I haven't heard anyone say where we're going to come up with the $700,000 in cuts. That seems to be, you know, something that we can all live with. So, like I said, I'm not, I don't like the idea of charging $3 a month for garbage, but it, but it certainly does get us to where we need to be currently. Does it solve our 2013 problem? Absolutely not, and I understand that. And I think as a long-term model, we as a group have to look at what services we no longer are going to be involved in providing and really we'll have to take a big bite in that. But as far as getting us through tonight and today's budget problem, and again, you'd see about a $250,000 surplus towards next year's problem, I think it's a start. So I guess I pose that to everyone. You good? Done. Just yeah. Thank you. Yes, Alderman Kielsen. Just say that again. You, you, you were talking beginning. about keeping the garbage, keep garbage in house, but just charge our, charge a three dollar fee Correct. for garbage. Correct. If we for kept, garbage pickup. if we kept the garbage in house, and I, and I believe the the household numbers were seventeen thousand to seventeen thousand five hundred. Okay. If you charged a three dollar fee per month, mm -hmm. that would come out to thirty six thousand, uh, thirty six dollars a year. Um, that would come out to approximately, at 17,500 houses, it would be $630,000 in revenue. Okay. Um, again, and, and based Gene, on... Gene, you good? Yes, thank you, okay. thank you. Alderman Sampson? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Jim, just from, from last year, with the, raise, the slight raise in, in, the, in the taxes, what was it, six cents per... We kept the tax rate the same, but the act levy actually went up 200000 <clears throat> On average, what was that year. increase per house? Is there a rough, a very rough idea what that was per household? I know, I know averages are different. Six cents per thousand or something like yeah. that? It was six cents per thousand, I think it was yeah. last year. Would, I guess what I'm trying, what I'm, what I'm trying to rationalize here, if, if, if you add $3 a month to the households for their taxes, that's essentially the same thing as a tax. Period. So, what's the difference between? I mean, is it was it less per household per month from last year's levy increase compared to just adding three dollars on? Because if it is, then I would say just raise our taxes 
can't. Well, we can't. Well, we can't raise right. the tax. But I'm just saying. I mean, it's right. it's. Call it what you want to, if a fee or a service or whatever. It's, it's well, well, let's put it this way. Let's say way. we keep garbage and find something else to save money on. Effectively, I was asked this question earlier, um, where do we think the tax rate's going to be for next year? It's difficult only because we're missing two key pieces. One is the manufacturing um, assessments from the state, uh, which we anticipate, at least from what we hear, be at least a a week later than normal. Normally, normally we get a mid-November. And then there's an assessment ratio that we also get from the state <clears throat> that kind of takes the assessed values they get from all of the municipalities and then looks at all of the sales of homes throughout the state by area and puts a, a percentage on that. And then you do the math and you take your assessed value times this assessed ratio which is supposed to give you fair market value. Then you take that fair market value and divide it into your levy, and you get a rate. So with the levy staying the same, not increasing or decreasing, and we know assessed values for residential are already down, I've got the feeling that manufacturing will be down. So it says even with the levy staying the same, the rate will increase and our citizens will have to pay more tax. There will also be a quiz on that formula. <laughs> Correct. But the short story is the rate's going to go up. How much? I can't tell you until I get the two pieces from the state to do the actual math. But it will go up. You saw that in the county. They actually reduced their levy, but the rate went up. That's because the assessed values went down farther than their levy dropped. So. Um, we have to wait and see. And again, that was an estimate by the county because they really don't have all of the numbers they need from the state as well. But it's their best guesstimate. Alderman Van Akron. Just to, again, reiterate, it's not that I want to see a fee increase. Again, call it what you want. Is it, is it an increase of money that homes are having to pay to the city for their services? Absolutely. It's not that I want to see that, but the reality is, is, is we're here and we can't continue to supply services when our, our, the, the money that we're bringing in no longer covers our cost. So we need to find ways to adjust that or, or to do business differently. And I guess that's what I'm looking for is, is some ideas as to where we get there. Um, privatizing garbage gets you there, but you're, you're just adding, again, call it what you want, that fee is actually triple, you know, the $3 fee that, that I just discussed. It's still homes that are paying it. It's just that the city's not paying it anymore. And we can say, well, that works for us, but the homeowner and the person whose garbage is getting collected, it probably doesn't work well for them. Again, it's not what I want, but I'm trying to reduce that and minimize the, the effect to the homeowner and, and to the people and to our citizens as small as we can. And I think it's easier to retract that fee mm -hmm. later down the road when we can, rather than try to start up garbage service or, or to, to do something else. I, I just think this is one way to go. Thank you. Alderman Haman. We're sitting here talking through all this stuff and I'm listening to everything here and I, I read what former Mayor Susha handed me here. And the one question I keep coming back to is what do we do next year? The year after that, the year after that, and the year after that. We're, we're just, we're in a really bad spot. Um, I think for far too long, we've kept kicking the can down the road. We're all trying to look at a light at the end of the tunnel. That's not two months away. It's, it's five years, it's 10 years, it's 15, it's 20. What's gonna get us there and what's the way we're gonna start getting there? We're listening to the financial numbers that are coming from Chief Administrator Amodio over here. And our, our bond rating, we're nowhere near where our own ordinance says we're supposed to be. We're going to have to come up with money uh, to, to provide these services that everybody says that they want, but nobody wants to pay more for. Where do we keep, you know, where do we stop the bleeding? Where do we figure out where to make the cuts? Where do they come from? Where, where are they going to be? Do we keep banging on Department of Public Works? Do we bang on the Mead Library more? Do we, do we, do we attack the, the fire department some more? 
there's a lot of stuff we've been handed over a, over a long period of time. And a lot of it that we've discussed here tonight that we do need to move forward on. And I think we're all in agreement on that. But as we're, as we're making these discussions, what can we do that's not going to fix the problem tomorrow, but it's going to fix it a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, two years from now, five years, ten years? When, when are we going to actually find that? I, I don't want to pay any more for anything than I absolutely have to. I, God knows that. But I would think nothing about going over to Walmart and picking up a Blu-ray player for 200 bucks, but I'm going to squawk about paying 120 bucks for my garbage. I'll go to Walmart and I'll pick up a gallon of milk that two years ago cost me $2.50, is now costing me $3.50, I'll think nothing of it, but I don't want to pay more to have fire protection. I'll go get a pound of hamburger, and this one strikes really close to home because we raise beef cattle, and paying the prices that I am there, but I don't want to fund the Mead Public Library. These are the decisions that we're going to have to make and something that we're going to have to do. We've got a couple options here. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to raise the fees and the prices on it. And the, the first one that we were given, and, and regardless of how we want to look at it, is, is going to be the privatizing garbage. That's a huge chunk of change. That's not only going to fix this budget, but it's going to start fixing some roads. It's going to give us a big chunk of what's going on next year. We're going to have to look at more. Uh, we've got a lot of things on the table. It's, it's just the direction that we're going to go. And that's, that's what we're sitting here, we're gonna, we're gonna have to figure out. We've got some options back and forth, but we can beat them all, all, all day long. We've all seen the finances, it's what direction we're gonna go with it. Hi, I'm in Versi. Thanks, good point. We have to, multiple things, multiple facets of everything. What was the wheel tax number that you had? 250. Okay. Just with four things. What Alderman Ben Akron suggested for that $630,000. Four station fire department model of 72.5 firefighters, $340,000. The very conservative number that Dave Beeble just gave us of $150,000. Another $250,000 for a wheel tax. That's, that's $1.32 million right there with those four things. That's moving forward every year. That's not even doing getting out of the garbage, but that's real numbers right there, and that's a conservative number from DPW. You know, they seem to be a whipping boy for everything, so we, we can squeeze some more out of them. So, I mean, that's a conservative number. And then, what else is there? We have to start doing things. We're kicking it around all the time, but nobody wants to commit to anything. Oh, let's do this, well, but now I'm not gonna do that. Oh, let's do this, now I'm not gonna do that. We're not getting anywhere. We're sitting here talking about everything, and we're not getting anywhere. These are the four things that we've heard tonight that are hard numbers. Besides, you know, getting out, that's 1.6, and then you still have to add more things to look at the future. Not just this year, not just next year. 2014, 16, 18, 22. Where are we going? Every year we're gonna be sitting in this exact same meeting to saying, okay, what, what else can we cut here? What are we doing? Unless we look forward with continual things. And those four, that's a good start for continual things, I think, but we have to do them. No one's gonna like it. No one likes fees. No one likes paying more for things. Yeah, great analogy is going to Walmart, you know, same thing, it's necessities. Is that Blu-ray player a necessity? No, it's not. But, unfortunately, these are prices we're going to have to live with. So, I think these four things, on a wheel tax, the garbage fee, I like that idea, a fire department and whatever else we can get out of DPW. I mean, that's $1.3 million. That's our 650 hole and money for next year and keep digging. Food for thought. Yeah, okay. This is getting very difficult as chair to keep quiet, but please. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure all of you have seen um, or heard, read in the papers about other municipalities in the state. Uh, compared to what fire and police have contributed um, to this cause for next year, it's probably going to be one of the leaders in the state as far as contributions from PP&S, and I really commend both of them on doing that. Uh, so it's really reduced our budget gap to something that's close to manageable, but again, manageable looking down, not out. Um, across the state, there are fee-for-service charges being raised in all municipalities because they have no other way to solve their budget deficit. Um, budget deficits, uh, you know, in comparable cities to us are two, two and a half million dollars this year. 
not, you know, we started out at a million three and whittled it down to, to 650 right now uh, for this year. So there's no recourse throughout the state other than to raising fees to cover expenses for services. And we've also seen cuts across the board, especially in Milwaukee with police and fire. Uh, so it says there's really nothing that's sacred anymore. And what we have to really do is look at long-term solutions to these problems that, as, as Joel said, will continue to be there year after year after year. I call it creeping inflation. It's going to be 2 to 3% a year on whatever the number is. So all I can suggest is, is that it's a start, but we still have to look out to say, how do we really fix the problem? Good. All right. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you. I, I guess, and I, I know we do have to look ahead, but sometimes I think we have to take one year at a time. Um, I, I like what uh, Alderman Van Akron is talking about. I, too, I don't like passing along a fee to, to our, our tax-paying citizens because I think they pay enough as it is. Um, however, I, do, I don't want to let go of the garbage because once we do let go of it, we're, we're not going to get that back. Fixing the budget for this year, um, to me, is, it would be a, a good thing. Uh, well, we have to do that, but we also have a report here that we spent some money for and it's strategic fiscal planning. I guess I'd like to take this, take it apart and look at everything and, and come forward next year. You know, we've got a year then to come forward with, a, with some kind of a plan and we don't know what's gonna happen down the road, but I'd like to take a further look at this and, and uh, come forward with something for next year based on what we've heard from the citizens. So that's my thought. Thank you. Alderman Van Akron. I, I know it has to be killing you. I, I guess I'm looking for your ideas and your hey, thoughts I'm, on, I'm good. on any of this. Um, <laughs> with your rest, fiscal but... background, I certainly would love to hear your input. Well, I'm just going to kind of play devil's advocate. Right now we pay $7.61 if we use the 17500 times. So increasing it by three takes it to ten dollars and sixty one cents if the privatizing is nine fifty we're actually saving the taxpayers dollars I'm just gonna throw that out there from a math now again control all those types of things and again I'm just playing devil's advocate um, control is obviously a, a factor um, the ability to bring those in get rid of the fees as the economic times get better certainly is a factor um, but again by adding that three dollar fee if we look at 1.6 divided by 17 5 it's seven dollars and sixty one cents a head or a household at a three dollar fee or at 1061 not saying it's the right or wrong way to go but it's adding that fee now makes you neutral with essentially privatizing um, and I'm probably gonna take some serious heat rounds for this one but you know one of the areas we haven't looked at it was the library um, they make up a very substantial proportion of our again playing devil's advocate a very substantial proportion of our levy um, 2.4 ish million um, that's a big number. Um, I understand that um, in the past, you know, the maintenance of effort, we don't have that issue anymore. Um, so again, is there opportunity there? Um, again, with um, Mr. Beeble's comments earlier, um, you know, we know there's going to be some retirements. Uh, do we just say, look, we're cutting 300,000? Figure it out, make it happen. Um, you know, those are some of the tough decisions we're going to have to make. Um, you know, so the, kind of the reason I'm, I'm, if you see the red face, is more because we haven't, I don't think, looked at this deep enough, and, and I've had this conversation with multiple people. You know, we haven't looked at the fundamental structure of government in this city. Um, and I'm not trying to pontificate or anything like that, but we've continued to operate a 1950s model in year 2011. You know, do we need to be combining departments? Do we need to be combining administration? Do we need to be combining a lot of those things? And we let a whole year pass without even looking at any of that. Obviously, we've had some distractions, but we've let the whole year pass without looking at that stuff. Um, I think we need to look at it that way. Um, so to some extent, I agree. If we can get through this year, right. we can look at that. But the other side is I also don't want to incur new fees and those types of things as a temporary Band-Aid. Because you know, we all know how long after we're gone, if there's a fee there, it's very difficult to get rid of it. Ask anybody that was on the council when they got rid of the stormwater and the, the wheel tax, those are not easy fees to get rid of. Um, you know, the fire department obviously closing the station creates some issues. Um, 
but there's some savings there. None of these are going to be easy decisions, but again, you know, 300,000 from DPW, 200,000 from the library, close a fire station, we're right where you were talking about before. I'm not saying those are the right answers, but there's a lot of alternatives um, to that without raising a fee, um, whether it's the wheel tax or um, the, a garbage fee. So I just throw that out. Please. If I can just, I guess, get some clarification. You said it was approximately seven and a half dollars per household now for garbage collection. I was just doing rough math on right. $1.6 million at 17 and a half households. 17,500 households. But this is what I post to you. It's not like we're giving that seven and a half dollars back. That, that's not. in tax levy. So we're actually talking about increasing it from what it is now at seven and a half dollars to 17 and a half dollars. Um, you know, my, my increase would take it from seven to 10 to because of where we're at financially. I mean, am I wrong or did I miss it? No, you're it? absolutely okay. right. So I mean- it, But the cost for the service would be neutral. Correct, yeah, as far as, but again, the cost to the home would go up by that Ten dollar mark because it's not like their taxes are going to go down by seven and a half dollars. Um, so, so really, the the cost per home to us, it works for the city to to balance the budget. Yeah, but it, the the cost per home again, it, it's still a fee that we're incurring, and I'm trying to minimize the damage as much as possible until we all come together and decide where the city is going to either reduce services or or through expansion and development and hopefully the increased economy coming shortly. Um, you know, how we're gonna to continue to operate. I think this is one way to get there. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's just one way. I, I'm certainly open to what anyone has to say, but I, I don't think we're seeming to get an answer. And I guess if, if we're not gonna increase revenues, I'd like to hear someone's answers as to how we do this then. Okay. Any other comments? Thank Please. you, Chairman. The uh, 17,500 households, that's also the four families, the two families. Mm -hmm. So the water bill would be four times on a four family. Right. So it's not all being passed on the taxpayer, it's also being taxed on tenants. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm oh, yeah. Go over that. Correct. Correct. Yes. Did you hear that? Is that what you were asking? Right. It'd be per address, not just per landowner or anything like that. It, it, per, per water meter. If we use the water route, if we went to a tax, you know, on your tax bill, it'd be different, I'm sure. Right. Please. So what are we doing? What are direction are we giving our, ourselves? Are you looking for a motion of some kind that... Uh... We certainly can. If, uh, if we want to make a recommendation to the council, that's up to the, this body certainly can. Uh, you know, it, yeah, I'll leave it at that. This is tough. <laughs> Alderman Van Akron. I'll jump in the fire then. I will make a motion to establish a road repair fee at $10 a vehicle and to establish a garbage collection fee at $3 a month per, per household pickup, however you'd like to. That would be the road repair fee at $8. I'm sorry? $8. Okay. At eight dollars a vehicle. For five wheels. Two bucks a tire. Five wheels. Two bucks a tire. Five wheels. Betw oh, be looking. between that. All right. One at a time. Please reclarify your your motion here. Road repair fee at two dollars a tire. Which the estimate would be two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. A garbage collection fee. At three dollars. A month which would give us approximately $630,000. And then with savings through DPW, you know, we're talking over a million to hopefully cover our, our, our thing. But that, that's my motion is to establish those two fees. I'll second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to uh, put together a $2 per tire road maintenance. Perfect. I'm just clarifying. I'd like that. Yes. Road maintenance. Um, and three dollars per household per month for a garbage collection fee. Garbage collection fee. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Now officially under discussion. Thank Please. You, uh, with your motion, though, you're also looking at not privatizing the garbage. Correct. I'd be keeping garbage as is, but establishing a three dollar a month fee. 
flip a coin. Go ahead. Would that three dollar a month fee? Would that be per residential address, or per living unit? It would be the same, and I guess I'd have to. Where's um, Mr. Beeble? That's per every unit, correct? Per pickup that we per unit that we pick up. And, and just to clarify, um, apartment buildings that are more than four units are on their own, anyways. So it'd be it'd be four plexes and or less per address that currently gets garbage collection. That's the number. That's that's where the seventeen five comes from. At least that's where I was given it from. Are you good? Is, is that number is correct? That that was from Department of Public Works. The seventeen five is per living unit. Or per living Um, I think his question is, is the 17,500, is that an accurate number of pickup? That's about as accurate as we can okay. discern from what we pick up in the field. Okay, thanks. Alderman Madchex, do you have something you had that? Yeah, same Alderman question. Versi, did you have a question? No, I thought I saw your hand go up. All right, still under discussion on the motion. I was going to let you talk. Hmm? I was going to let you talk. <laughs> uh, under, other, under further discussion on the motion. One last time. Uh, Hearing none, roll call please. Belt? Aye. Carlson? No. Hammond? No. Hammond? Hammond? <laughs> no. Heidemann? Nope. Path? No. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Riesler? No. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. And Versi? Aye. Five ayes. And noes. All right, motion fails. How many noes? <clears throat> okay. Okay, where are we going to come noes? up with the money? <laughs> Other discussion? Can I just, how many noes? Alderman Kittleson? We're on that. Seven. Thank you. You're welcome. We got to come up with this money someplace. So where are we going to come up with the money? Alderman Riesler. I'll make a motion that we privatize the garbage. And second. Here's a motion and a second to privatize uh, garbage. Um, there's a motion and a second. Did you get the second? Did you second it? Carlson did. Under discussion. I guess, uh, okay. Alderman Van Akron. I guess just to recap, we voted against doing a garbage fee at $3, but we're going to increase the per home cost to approximately 10 or so dollars. I guess I don't understand the reasoning for that, and we are going to lose control of where those costs go. In three years from now, those, those costs could be $25, $30, and at, what, at, at that point, what are our options? Are we really going to go out and buy garbage trucks at that point and hire a bunch of people to, to then restart our service? I don't think so. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, nobody wants to pass along these fees, I get it, but now we're talking about a 10, uh, approximately $10 per household fee that we are passing along. And it's not as if people are saving on their taxes. They're not getting you're, you're anything back. You're talking about eight dollars for the car and three dollars for the for your assessment. You're at eleven dollars. The person's paying more a year, as opposed to uh, hundred and up to one hundred and twenty. You know, you're you're. Okay. It also uh, gives us some extra money for looking at the future as well. Alderman Carlson. I'm going to go back to the fact that 70% 70, 70 of the state uses privatized garbage service. It, it, it must work because if it didn't, um, well, maybe not in these times, maybe they don't have the money, they would go back to their own garbage service. I, I fully support this because, for, for one, I mean, it's a $1.6 million price tag. This could help put us on the path to become financially well off that in three years, if they do try to screw us over on our monthly rate, we could buy new garbage trucks. Right now, we can't even do that. Um, I'll, I'll go to the mayor. Getting there, just relax. 
Don't need a motion. Mayor, then Joe, then Gene. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, no, when it comes to privatizing garbage, uh, there are only a couple companies in the garbage business right now that are, that are, that are going to bid. Um, and that's where we came up with that, that uh, about $10 fee, somewhere in that range. Um, to three years from now, to think that that fee would be $25, if there's one company involved and that fee is $25, I guarantee you there's going to be companies coming out of the woodwork to bid on that. Uh, that's the way the private sector works. It's supply and demand. So for the city to have to control something such as garbage pickup that can be done by the private sector, thinking that we're going to control the costs of that industry is not true. If that company, if there's, there, you know, there's no such thing as one garbage company in the state. If we had only one provider <clears throat> for this area um, and that provider was going to bid something uh, outrageously high, I guarantee you there would be a, another uh, several providers coming in trying to bid on that. I've already gotten calls to my office. I've gotten one call from somebody that is not even in the garbage business right now that was interested in bidding on city garbage and getting into the garbage business if we privatize garbage. So to say that we have to control, guard, control you know, have to stay in the garbage business to control the fee, I do not believe in at all. And that's all I'll say. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Heidemann. Okay, thank you, Chairman. You're um, when you uh, bring out that 71% of the overall cities that have privatized garbage, how are they paying for it? Are they paying it on their tax bill? Or are they paying it as a fee? That's what has to be determined here. Because <coughs> if we were going to privatize our garbage and, it was, and our taxes weren't going to go up and that money wasn't going to go slid in another area, I'd be behind, I'd be behind, be behind it in a right away, it wouldn't make any sense to me. But we're basically just saying, well, well, we'll privatize it and, and, we'll, and, and the citizens will pay, it, pay for it some other way. That doesn't make any sense to me. I want it on the tax roll. If we're, if we're, if we're gonna privatize garbage, I want, it paid in my, I want it paid by my tax dollar, and then I can write that off. That's what I've been hearing from my constituents. I wanna be able to deduct it if I'm gonna have to pay for it by a private organization. And okay. I don't know what that percentage is yeah. of the 71% that are on the tax roll versus uh, uh, the, the fee, so. Okay, thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Chairman, and I wanted to ask about that 70%, I, and, and is it cities the size of Sheboygan that privatize their garbage? Can I, is Dave, Dave Beeble, would he have that answer? Do cities, and then also going back to, to the study, the Whitewater study, it's like 87% of our citizens <laughs> See, our garbage collection is excellent, and, and they want it to continue, as is. Dave, um, she asked us 70%. Is cities our size? What are they if, at? If you look at, I guess, if you would go against our peer communities, yes. similar size as Sheboygan, the majority are going to have municipal collection. Okay. However, though, I mean, it, it, that doesn't mean that privatization does not work, it works. I mean, most, I mean, everybody in the county besides the city of Sheboygan has privatized collection. The, the, the issue then you mentioned, is it on your taxes or is it a fee? Out of our peer communities, Janesville did a study back in 2008. <coughs> Out of, I believe, the 11 communities, three of them had a direct fee. The others were on municipal taxes. Hang tight there in case there's further questions. Uh, Alderman Sampson. Thank you. Um, going on the issue of having the ability to write it off on your taxes, right? Is it the, mm -hmm. we're looking at $120 max per year. Is it that big? Any, any tax advisors in here is $120 <coughs> really going to make or break a household if they can't write it? And if we're not lowering property taxes, you're still getting the same benefit next year as you did the year prior if, if our tax bill is roughly the same. So I don't, I don't know if it's really that significant that you cannot write it off on your, on your taxes, $120. I don't, I don't know. If you file a Schedule A, I think you might think differently. <laughs> but Alderman Carlson. You good? I do. Please. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, to authorize the privatizing of garbage. Uh, any further discussion? Alderman Cobb. Thank you, Chairman. 
um, on voting on privatization, that doesn't automatically charging off a monthly fee. I mean, is that still up for negotiation or? I guess so. Jim? You want to move your microphone closer and repeat the question? Are you asking more on the process? Well, I'm just I question is, is it just a given that if we the garbage and, and add the fee on to the uh, sewer or water bill? So that clears it up for you. No, is it just a given that um, by saying yes to your, the, uh, the motion that we would just automatically charge a $10 fee? I mean, that's still no, room for sure negotiation, right? If you'll amend your second. Well, it, it, I think we need to, it, uh, by privatizing garbage, we'd have to take it out to a bid. And go through that process and determine what that final cost would be. So what we'd be authorizing, <laughs> if I understand your motion right, Alderman right. Riesler, is we'd be authorizing them to bid out for privatizing of garbage. Yeah, so no. it's just not a given that we're charging $120 a year for, you know, on a water bill at this time. That would be an estimate. Just for privatization of garbage. And then okay. just kind of clarification, if we privatize, can that fee go on the tax bill? Only as a special charge, and it's not deductible. Right, I understand it's not deductible, but instead of paying the forty grand to our friends at the water utility, if we acted quick enough, we could get it on this year's bill. If we didn't, we'd have to wait another year, and we'd be a year in the arrears in collecting taxes. So it says that there would be no benefit next year if it went on the tax bill. It would be in the tax bill of December twelfth. Okay, um, and then the timeline. Four. If we privatized, you know, obviously it's not going to happen tomorrow. Um, are we we'd, talking first We'd have quarter? to go out for RFPs. The, the one we talked to um, said that uh, they could at, react quickly. If they could use our equipment, they would buy it for a nominal fee until they could replace it with theirs. And they would run the same routes on the same days. Okay. Are you comfortable with that for your motion? Um, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you. Is, is there a cap that you're setting to the monthly fee, or we're just saying privatizing garbage and what they come back with is, is what we're going to go with? I guess I, that's my question. Is uh, we'd have to go I mean, out for are, RFPs. These are estimates as to what it would cost. But hard quotes. Right now we have soft ones. Right. Um, again, I guess I just I can't support privatizing this, losing control of the service, the quality of service that we're providing to our citizens, and at the same time not being sure of, of what that actual fee is going to be. And, and to disagree with the mayor, we are increasing the cost of collection. The collection now costs 1.6 million. The estimates alone are increasing to 1.9, and we have no control as to where those go in the future. It is up to private industry to decide those. But, but we have no ideas what those will be, and, and I don't think the city will be in a position to compete with those in the future. As we go forward, we're going to be looking at getting out of services. I think the last thing we're going to be doing is looking at getting back into one. The, o the only thing I would say to that is that if after a contract was renewed and it jumped 10, 15, 20, 30 percent, we would, we would know about that. We would read about it. Uh, and if we've got certain sections of the city already for multiple units greater than four, are privatized, um, and I don't think we've seen those increases either. So, I mean, again, I, no crystal ball in the future, but if it were an issue, uh, I believe that there, we would have read about it by now. And just to follow up, sorry, um, and to go with what Alderman Heiderman had to say, I'd, I'd be in support of it if, if we could afford it and it was gonna be on our tax rolls, and, but, but that's you know, just not the reality of it, is if we privatize this, there will be a fee that we are passing along per household of, of another $10, and it's not as if they're saving the $7 it costs them now. So you know, theoretically, garbage collection is now costing them somewhere in the range of 16 to $17 per household per month. I can't support that going forward with, with all the questions that we have. Alderman Versi. If I could put a friendly amendment on that, that when they're going out for your RFP, privatizing it, you're looking for a five-year contract. If you would put that on there. Just make it a five-year, so you have that little bit more control. Say what? You're good. Add friendly amendment to five -year contract. make a five-year five contract. contract. 
Are you good with the friendly amendment second? Not if it's binding. I, I, I think we need to find, you said three to five. We don't, we don't know what they're going to offer. But if we got to take three, I'd settle for three. You can ask. I mean, I guess I have, no, I have no problem if they ask for looking at five, but if we're only able to get a three, we're going to have to get what we can get. Okay. We have a motion and a second um, to private or authorize the privatizing of garbage um, for the city of Sheboygan. Um, any further discussion? Yes. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you. And I guess I just I have to go along with what Alderman Van Akron is saying. I, I don't want to do this either because we're just going to be passing along a fee uh, to our taxpayers and uh, and we don't have control over it as he says. We'll, and once we're out of the business, we'll never get it back and we'll lose that control. And, and I don't think that's a good thing. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, there's certainly no doubt that this is a cost shift. Um, no doubt at all. Um, I think my biggest hang up with it is that we just don't have firm numbers. So it's very difficult to say, yes, let's go ahead and privatize number or privatize garbage without even knowing what it actually looks like, what the contract would look like, you know, all those types of things. So uh, that's just uh, my two cents worth, but I saw Alderman Sampson. Thank you. Uh, is there, well, two things. Now, now you just came up with another question for that. Is, is there a way to set a standard or, or some sort of a to to appease your uh, your issue with that if you if you are for or against privatizing garbage but if you're for privatizing garbage but there's a there's the ability to create some sort of a cap or a, a number that we're looking for if it's if it doesn't if it's not met then we don't we don't do it is there so is there a way to do that or are we just going to go forward with just the idea of privatizing garbage well, I mean, there's really two ways you can approach it, I think. Yes, you can set a cap and say, you know, if, if it exceeds $10, whatever the number we pick, we, we're not going to do it. Um, or, of course, if I was the garbage, private garbage vendor, what, do you, what number do you think I'm going to come in at? Um, but secondly, we could also authorize them to go out for bid and... Um, bring that, those bids back to us and we would be able to make a decision based versus the two um, before, preferably before the 21st. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may remind everybody, this is just a recommendation to the council, right. which will give us some time in between to probably collect up some harder numbers. So the, um, to answer your question, we could set that limit on it, but I would probably suggest that we just authorize them to go out for an RFP um, a quick RFP to determine what those numbers would be. Because I, I think it's very difficult to make these decisions without having those numbers in front of us. I mean, it might be the right way to go. I don't know. And remember, it's a it, recommendation. It's not. I understand. Is that what, I'm sorry, is that, is that what we're going to be voting on here in a second? It's a recommendation to go to the council. Recom we're recommending to council. At that time, we could have some of the, the privatizing of, of authorizing the privatization of garbage. Okay. And I would no, go to the council on 21st. Yes. Good. Well, and then if I may, then my original thought was this is not the end here. We're, 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 everybody's figuring that, well, okay, we're going to stop here at privatizing garbage. We have a, a bunch of other issues on the table here that can tip us over, far over into the savings area. Privatizing garbage is not where we're stopping here. If, if we were going to stop here, then yeah, I would have an issue because then we're going to be basically just charging a fee. But we have other areas that we still haven't even addressed at this point. So. Um, Again, we're just making recommendations to council. Call a question. So, we can certainly do that. Alderman Van Akron. I, I guess I'd like to hear what those other things are because at this point, that's all we are doing is establishing a fee. We're establishing a fee for private garbage, which is going to cost more than what the city does, and we're, we're going to pass that along to the households that get collected. We're getting there. So, I, I'd like to hear the ideas as to where this other money is going to come from and what the other ideas are. I mean, if, if the ideas are to cut and to eliminate other services and privatize garbage to solve our problem, I'd love to hear all of that as, as a package. Um, because right now we're establishing a fee. It's going to cost more than what the city does. And again, our taxes aren't going down. So we're just passing this along to our citizens. And, and there's a lot of people that, are, that have spoken up on how they don't want to do that. Well, then explain to me how this is going to work. Cause it seems fairly simple to me that that's exactly what we're doing. Alderman Carlson. 
just wanted to once again this is just a recommendation of the council we're, we're not done I know I'm not done um, but I would like to call the question fair enough all right there's a motion and a second uh, to make a recommendation to council uh, to authorize the privatizing of garbage Alderman Cotha would you take Bell? the roll please Bell? no Carlson aye Hammond aye Sorry, you. Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Nope. Hoff? Aye. Kittleson? No. Matichek? No. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? No. Bercy? Aye. Seven aye and five no's. Good. Motion carries. Again, any other? Discussion or motions for recommendation to the council for budget related items? You have your hand up or you're just pointing at the air? hand up, okay. yes. Um, adding to that, just doing the rough numbers with, with what we have, say we go through with privatizing, um, it, that's $950,000 surplus for next year. But we have all the retirements coming. If you add that with the fire and the savings in DPW, we're at 1.44. So I still think, like Alderman Sampson said, we have to continue. One thing isn't going to do it. We need more things, and it's all going to add up. So I guess. Um, are you making a ver Are you making a motion? I'm going to. Okay. I'm getting there. Okay. Come on. I'll, I'll make the motion to uh, take the the chief's recommendation for a four four station scenario and 72.5 firefighters, and for next year. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second um, to recommend to the council. We go down to four stations and 72 and a half firefighters. Am I repeating that correctly? Yep. Thank you. There's a mo scenario. motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Van Akron. I'm a busy guy today. You are. I certainly can't support this either. We, we've now solved or we're, we're suggesting to solve our budget problems with just passing along the fee to uh, the households that get collected. Now we're gonna solve further budget problems by decreasing the public safety that we provide to our citizens. I, I certainly can't support that. That's exactly what this will do. It will increase response times. It will supply a, a less effective service for monetary gain. And I, and I can't support that. I don't think our citizens support that. I don't think they want that. They, they are happy with the service they are getting. I think in the priority of the services we provide, public protection and safety is at the top of that list. And I don't see that we can now cut the fire department and go down to four stations, increasing the risk to our citizens to, to help our budget problems. I don't think that's the answer. Thank you. Did you just hit your button again? Yeah, I did. Sorry. You don't get two in a row. I can try. Under discussion. Under discussion. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I received some reports here today on what our fire department uh, spends uh, per capita here. And we are <coughs> right in line with what, what we need to be. Um, uh, with what we spend for our department and for the service that we give. And um, I, I too, I think having our fire stations in place as they are, uh, public protection and safety is number one to our citizens. And, and the model that we have um, is working and uh, we cannot, uh, I would, could not support going down to four fire stations. Thank you. You're welcome. Further discussion? Hearing none, the motion is to go down to four stations and 72 and a half firefighters. Um, so call, the, call the roll, please. Bell? Aye. Carlson? No. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Nope. Hoff? No. Kittleson? No. Matichek? No. Riesler? No. Sampson? Aye. Ben Akron? No. Percy? Aye. Four yeses, eight noes. Motion fails. Again, keep in mind that these are just recommendations to the council. Certainly can be brought back up on the 21st. Other thoughts, recommendations, or discussion on the 2012 budget? 
where are we getting some money from? Where's the future of this city? That's what we get a look at. Other discussion on the 2012 budget and related items or any additional recommendations to the council? Alderman Versi. I make the recommendation to bring the, uh, what did Alderman Ben Akron call it, the road repair at $2 per tire. Um, what did he call that? Road maintenance no, fee? No, it's wheel tax. We, road maintenance fee of $2 per tire. All right, there's a motion to bring back the $2 per tire road maintenance fee. Is there a second? Second time, is there a second? Hearing none, motion fails for lack of a second. We're getting money. Other discussion? We've got a band-aid. Hearing none, we've got, uh, we'll move on to the next meeting date, which would be uh, We have, um, Council document 1547 and 1548, um, one, uh, 1547 ordering the 2012 budget appropriations for the Sheboygan, the city of Sheboygan funds. Um, I guess, uh, I don't see Nancy here, but are we looking for, I think we're looking for a recommendation to the council on that. Um, just take So I would entertain, uh, entertain a motion to I recommend it? Alderman, oh, sorry, go, go ahead, Jean. What do these documents tell, I mean, tell us? Just I was just about to call Jim. Okay. Everybody clear on that? Feel free to ask questions now. I'm sorry, I didn't, oh. I didn't really hear that. Sue? Um, Madam Clerk? Just to clarify, these two documents plus all other budget documents will be handled at Surgeon. It will be at the 28th, the special right. council meeting. We have the public hearing on the Correct. Correct. It'll be the 28th. Okay. Fair enough. Um, looking for a motion on these two documents. Move to send to council. Second. With a favorable with recommendation. A favorable recommendation. Motion to send to council with a favorable recommendation and a second. That's uh, just these documents. These two right documents, here. We're correct. We're not adding anything. To okay. it. Right. Under discussion. Hearing none. Roll call, please. Bell. Aye. Carlson? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kopp? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. And Versi? Aye. It's unanimous. Motion carries. Next uh, committee of the whole meeting would be uh, November 16th at 6.30 p.m., um, which was next Wednesday. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion, second. Thank you very much. Please drive safely.